there is a stereotype about Canadians being very nice people. This video will probably change your mind on that. Good evening, my dear friends. Welcome back to a brand new episode of True Crime Jesus. It has been almost two years since my last video, and I've decided to bring together some videos of incidents that have piqued my interest. I've spent the last two years scouring the internet to bring you, my dear friends, the craziest, never-before-seen security videos on the internet. Since I live in Toronto, this video today will focus on cases that have happened in my very own backyard, right here in Canada. Some of these cases have been solved, but most are not. I will be including the number for Toronto Police Services at the conclusion of the video. Due to the nature of the videos you are about to see, viewer discretion is strongly advised. So my dear friends, without further ado... July 6, 2023. Toronto police were called to Eglinton Subway Station shortly after 12.20 p.m. for a reported stabbing. On arrival, officers located Derek Dekoff, a white male suffering from multiple stab wounds. Dekoff was rushed to a trauma center. Paramedics described the wounds at the time as potentially life-threatening. Video taken of the incident shows Mr. Dekoff and a black male, 25-year-old Moses Lewin, engage in what appears to be a verbal altercation that turns deadly. Dekoff punches Lewin and the fight begins. Lewin immediately pulls out a knife and stabs Dekoff. Dekoff is then heard screaming for help as he runs through the subway train with Lewin chasing closely behind. Passengers begin rushing to the back of the subway car as it pulls into Eglinton Station. Lewin flees the scene. Police identified and arrested the assailant, Moses Lewin, the following day. At the time, Lewin was out on bail for other violent offenses. Lewin was charged with aggravated assault, assault with a weapon, and two counts of failing to comply with a release order. On Thursday, December 10, 2020, at 1.15 p.m., Toronto Police responded to a call of a disturbance at a plaza in the Steeles Avenue West and Almas Street area of Toronto. A man had parked his car at the plaza and was approached by Mr. Sam Green, a 70-year-old Toronto resident. Mr. Green first complained about the man's parking and then became aggressive. Mr. Green damaged the man's car with an unknown sharp object and then tried to flee the scene in his truck. As Green drove towards the man, the man jumped and clung onto Mr. Green's hood like Spider-Man. Mr. Green then drove around the plaza for several minutes with the man as his hood ornament. The driver would accelerate to a high rate of speed and then slam on his brakes, hoping the man would let go or fall off. The man clung to the hood for several minutes while yelling to bystanders to call police as he desperately held onto the hood of the truck. I would not recommend doing what this man did. I do understand not wanting a criminal to escape justice, but this could have ended much worse for him than it did. True cry of Jesus recommends that if this were to happen to any of my dear viewers, a better approach is simply record the license plate number and then immediately call the police to report the incident and its associated details. Sam Green was charged with one count of dangerous driving and one count of assault 
and mischief under $5,000. On Tuesday, September 15, 2015, at 4 a.m., a convenience store located near Queen Street West and Bathurst Street was robbed. The clerk, a 73-year-old man, was severely beaten. Security video shows a white male and a black male enter the store while covering their faces with bandanas. One man then jumps behind the counter and attacks the elderly clerk. As one man puts the clerk in a headlock, the second man punches the clerk repeatedly to the head and body. A quantity of cash and cigarettes were taken. The clerk went to the hospital. Aside from several broken ribs and internal bleeding, his injuries were not serious. The two goons are described as follows. Goon number one is a tall white male in his 30s with a medium build. He has short brown hair and wears a black t-shirt that ironically states God, guns, and money on the back. The second goon is a tall black male, also in his 30s, with short black hair. The case remains unsolved. Metrolinx released a short video showing what a GO train driver's camera captured on May 20th, 2022. Three people were trespassing on the Humber River Railway Bridge near Weston Road. This one reminds me of the scene from the movie Stand By Me. As you can see here, they are running for their freaking lives. I don't know if this is what they had in mind when they took this shortcut but I'd be willing to bet they'll go around next time. It appears the fellow on the left side had to jump over the railing to avoid being seriously injured. Let's hope he's okay and that he brought an extra pair of underwear that day. In this video, we witness a cold-blooded murder. Viewer discretion is advised. On September 14th, 2017, at 2.54 a.m., police were called to the Scarborough, Ontario high-rise apartment building at 6 Glamorgan Avenue, near Kennedy Road and Highway 401, after receiving a call of shots fired. Anthony Soros, 33, of Toronto, was found deceased in the lobby of the building. He suffered several close-range gunshot wounds and lay motionless in a pool of blood. Soros was rushed to a nearby hospital where he underwent emergency surgery but succumbed to his injuries. Soros was a close friend of the Toronto rapper Drake. Drake even posted his condolences in an Instagram post about Soros. Soros, sadly, was the father of a young child. The shooting is not believed to have been gang-related. Toronto Police released security camera footage of the incident from two different cameras in hopes of identifying the vehicles and or perpetrators. Soros was a passenger in this car, which brought him there. Soros gets out of the car and walks into the building's lobby out of view of the cameras. Soros' friend, the driver of a white Hyundai, has been identified and has cooperated with police. The first camera shows a white Ford Fusion approaching the building. Two men emerge from the car and are seen running towards the building. A few seconds later, the car is seen driving back. The two men return to the Ford Fusion and then flee northbound on Kennedy Road at a high rate of speed towards Highway 401. The second video shows Soros being shot repeatedly inside the lobby of the building. Soros is holding a and takeout in his hand and is buzzing to get inside. Two armed men with semi-automatic pistols run to the lobby entrance 
and start shooting Sores through the glass, emptying their clips. Bullets shatter the windows. The two men continue firing even after Sores falls to the floor. The shooter wearing the burgundy hoodie touches the door frame and then tries to wipe the fingerprints away before firing one final shot. The investigation is ongoing and the case remains unsolved. Next, we have a very interesting unsolved case. Toronto police are seeking assistance with a break and enter investigation that occurred on Sunday, June 10th, 2018. Police received a call to attend 213 Sterling Road, where the Art of Banksy exhibit was being hosted. At approximately 5.04 a.m., a man entered the exhibit through an interior door of the premises. Once inside, the man picked up the print Trolley Hunters, quickly exiting via the same interior door. The stolen Trolley Hunters print depicts crouching men in loincloths, armed with stone-tipped wooden spears and axes as they hunt shopping carts in a grassy field. The painting's value is estimated at $45,000. The Art of Banksy exhibit opened in a Toronto industrial building that had been converted into an art gallery. It was curated by Banksy's former manager, Steve Lazaridis. This particular exhibit was not endorsed by Banksy. It displayed around 80 works from collectors. At the time, it was billed as the largest collection of Banksy works ever assembled. Some have speculated that the theft may have been an inside job, or perhaps even done by Banksy himself, although there is zero proof of this. The thief is described as a white male with glasses, wearing a black jacket and a green camouflage baseball hat. His blue jeans were rolled up at the cuff. He also wore gray running shoes. This story is why you should always keep your doors and windows locked. Toronto police have identified a man that was creeping Toronto neighborhoods. He attempted to gain entry into several homes as people were sleeping inside. Investigators received reports of a man who was frequenting the area of Dundas Street East and Leslie Street and targeting various residences nearby. People saw him trying to gain entry into several homes during the late evening and early morning hours. The man acted very strangely and appeared to display lizard-like mannerisms as he loitered outside of these people's homes. Surveillance videos and images of the man were released by investigators to the public. Police quickly identified the prowler as Gerard Purcell, 40, of no fixed address. Hmm, what do you think his plans would be if he gained entry to the homes? Was he there recruiting for the Church of Scientology? Or, perhaps, did Gerard have something far more sinister in mind? Gerard was charged with two counts of attempted break and enter, and two counts of prowling by night. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this episode, my dear friends. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. There are many new videos currently in the works. Feel free to leave a comment or two below, or even just to say hello after all these months have passed. We will see each other again very soon. This episode of True Crime Jesus was brought to you by Ben & Jerry's Chocolate Therapy Ice Cream. 
What is chocolate therapy ice cream, you ask? Ben & Jerry's Chocolate Therapy Ice Cream is a magnificent concoction of chocolate ice cream. Then you add some of the best chocolate pudding and chocolate cookies you've ever tasted. And there you have yourself a real treat. So until we meet again, my dear friends, this is True Crime Jesus, signing off.